folks. Glad you can join me today for another Blaze Trails Forgotten, you know, Mike Eastman. Uh, whenever I come in my office and sit down at my desk here, sometimes I look up at this buck here, which uh, I took uh, on a late season hunt years ago in the 60s. But I kind of flash back to the first time I ever saw late hunting trophy mule deer in Wyoming. I was 13 years old, couldn't hunt, and uh, had to go with my dad. So come along with me. I got a story of my first exposure of trophy mule deer hunting in the 60s in Wyoming. Well, this all started when I was 13, and uh, my dad heard rumors about these winter ranges down there in Pinedale and Big Piney where there were literally thousands of mule deer wintering. And back then, the game of fish allowed you to hunt until the end of uh, December, believe it or not. And at that time, you could take two bucks, not just one, two, because they had literally thousands and thousands of deer. So one, uh, like about the 15th of December, dad decided, uh, well, we'll just go down there and take a look and see what there is to hunt, and of course, and do some hunting. I was too young. I was only 13 years old, but dad, like I said before, used to carry me around, so I would do the shoveling and pushing whenever he got stuck, because back then all he had was a Chevy pickup two-wheel drive, and so we threw the chains in the back of the truck, and off we went to Pinedale and Big Piney. Now that's over, I don't know, 100 miles maybe down there, so we're going along, and it's it's a good 30 below. And uh, we get down to Coro, which is just outside of uh, Pinedale and Big Piney, across the uh, Green River there. All those bucks come out of the Wyoming Range and out of the Wind Rivers and out of the Hoback, all that country, and go right down in that, what we call the part of the Red Desert, the northern part, and winter there. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so dad shows up, of course, I have to get gas. You know, back then, those rigs, they gobbled gas like you wouldn't believe. And so we pulled up there, and back then, if you didn't know, uh, when you pull up to the gas station, the attendant came out and asked you how much you wanted and fill her up or give me $5 worth or whatever. And so we get out of the truck and start stretching. You know, been in, sitting in that truck for an hour and a half, and the attendant comes out and says, how much do you want? And Dad says, oh, fill her up. And, and so the guy's sitting there filling up. And it's cold. It's by then about 25, 22 below. And he's sitting there filling it up. And my dad looks at him and goes, so I hear you guys got a lot of deer in winter down here. Guy goes, yeah, yeah, we got quite a few. And Dad says, well, we've never been here. Uh, where, do you, where are they? Where do you think they are? And the guy looks at my dad like, he's got these guys like, just look around, like he just said, he said, just look around like this. And so me and my dad started looking around at all the ridges and all the canyons and all the slopes with just like ants, hundreds and hundreds of deer. <laughs> my dad says, oh, I guess they're everywhere. And Tina says, pretty much. And so then we, we started hunting that day and he, he slaps the chains on, or him and I, uh, on, and we had weight in the back, so we had a two-wheel drive pickup, weight in the back, and chains on. And we're, we're out there, and the snow is probably, I don't know, shin deep. Sometimes you get those, those drifts to be up to, you know, above your knees, so you had to really watch where you were going. A lot of deer, saw a lot of bucks. Dad was pretty choosy back then. He'd, he'd taken some pretty good deer. And so we're going along there, and, and suddenly up on a ridge about 250 yards away. Here is this buck standing. I can just, I still remember it. It's a great big old non-typical looking around like this and dad gets out of the truck, plops down, gets a rest and he touched one off and that buck went like this and disappeared over the ridge. So we get in the rig and we go clear around because ridge goes over and, and, and we both know that on the other side of that ridge down the slope and over there's a fence and and there's a little, there's pasture there, sagebrush, and then there's a road. And so we can get around and get, get maybe in front of him and, and then walk, o walk out and go up on that ridge or that face and find him in one of those canyons or something, you know. So we make our way and we get around there. And just as we get around there, we look and this guy's dragging, dragging the buck and, to the fence. 
And my dad stops and gets out and says, I just shot that buck. And the guy says, well, you didn't shoot I shot it. He was wounded, and he come over that ridge and shot him. And dad looked at him, and sure as heck, dad shot him a little back. So he probably would have went down there and laid down, but that guy was on the other side of the ridge, and he came over, and the buck was doing this, and he shot him. And, and I don't know now, but back then, up until even in the 70s, that buck was in the uh, bar in Cora, Wyoming, big non-typical. So my dad just kind of shrugged his shoulders and go, oh, heck, you know, look at all these deer. We'll just, you know, go hunt another one, I guess, since I, this guy thinks he owns it. I'm not going to get a big deal about it. So we get in the truck and we hunted a couple days. And finally, the last day, you know, I had to be back to school. So this is Sunday afternoon. He, he filmed a couple guys, took photos of their bucks that they killed, some really nice ones you can see here. Back then, they really were some dandies. And he sees this buck uh, kind of on the skyline and see how wide he is. And so crack pop down he goes. We went over and, and the buck is really like 34 inches wide or wider, but he just doesn't have any forks. He's just an old, old buck. And so I, I took pictures of the buck for dad and, and you know, and, and so back we went to Jackson and that, that was my first kind of taste of hunting the winter ranges. And you got to realize back then there were so many deer I, in high school, we were able to hunt clear up into the end of December. And then as it was getting the end of like in the, like 67, they stopped it off the first of December. And when I came back from my service duty in the seventies, the early seventies, they had it cranked back to the end, end of November. And then they turned around and, you know, most of the deer that whole big huge of deer whittled down to to twenty percent of what they used to be, and um, so they quit. You know, basically hunting winter ranges, which is probably <laughs> they should have done it back in the sixties. They didn't understand where those deer came from. Those they're they're finding out now. Some of those deer will migrate two hundred miles to their summer winter range, coming out of the Tetons down and over and down in the Red Desert or out of like the Grove on and down, or the whole back, all that country. And all that country had deer in it. It wasn't just the high country. A lot of people think, well, all those thousands of deer live in the high country. They didn't. When I was a teenager, I would hunt them like right there on the whole back, whole back rim, and where there is a whole back ranches now, huge Quaker flats, and all that country had not just does, but bucks, the whole, all of it, not just the mountains itself. So if you took and calculated that whole country there, it, it at that time could support thousands of mule deer. And the only people there basically were ranchers. And even on their big ranches, they, you know, they were grazing where they didn't have meadows, their deer would, mule deer, bucks and does would be living there and then migrate and follow the Red Desert down and go further and further down into it as the winters got progressively worse. So that was my first uh, taste of hunting at that time. And, and it always brings back kind of good memories, but it was cold. And uh, if you get a chance, you might look at, I have a couple other videos, one on rolling across the Snake River at 25 below to hunt big mule deer. And, in another one of a 36 inch buck, I, I got snowshoe sickness hunting and uh, I did a story on those two and you might check them out. So see me again and like if you like my stuff. This is Mike Eastman, Blaze Trails Forgotten. See you next time.